I am uh, Anshul Makkar, and today my topic of my presentation is dynamic scheduler over free RTOS. Uh, it's uh, in a gist, it's it's about uh, dynamically uploading or replacing tasks uh, that are running on an embedded system over free RTOS uh, OS. So what is the problem? Uh, what will be the agenda for today's presentation? So I will first go through what is the problem that I'm trying to solve here. Um, then brief about the requirements. Uh, we will go into the details of the requirements, uh, then project progress at what phase, what needs to be done, uh, then followed by a demo on actual live board, and then followed by questions from your side. So the problem that we are trying to solve that, that led me to development of this module. So uh, I was approached by a company uh, where they wanted uh, their, uh, where they wanted the satellite uh, to switch tasks dynamically uh, without any need of system reboot or without any delay. And second requirement was that they should be able to maintain the software on the spacecraft in an updatable and healthy state, again, without complex reboot process or without uh, need for uh, going through uh, stopping the process, st uh, stopping the task and starting it again. Um, and also, uh, again, yeah, we will we'll go into the requirements uh, in the next slide. So we identified two approaches. One of one is we can just replace the task that's in execution on the fly. And second is full image replacement. So with the first approach with the task replacement, it's fast, but there is high risk associated with that. Uh, risk in the sense, uh, you are directly accessing the task memory. Um, there can be safety concerns around that, around that uh, concerns uh, about attacks because you are directly accessing the memory. Uh, full image replacement, it's slow. Uh, it's less risk and context is completely lost, uh, but slow is one of the main criteria and inefficient utilization of the bandwidth. That's another problem with this approach. So we went ahead with task replacement. Going into the details of the requirement. So yeah, uh, giving you, uh, starting with uh, the most important one, reboot is expensive and it, it leads to a uh, loss of the context of the currently executing task or the task in the execution. And we don't want that. Uh, giving you an example uh, spe specifically related to uh, this satellite world, suppose a spacecraft is taking an uh, image of clouds or reporting weather data. And immediately from the earth station, uh, they, they receive a message that there is a risk of collision. Now, immediately they want the task, uh, the satellite or the spacecraft to stop taking images and immediately switch to a task of collision avoidance or by altitude control. So start doing altitude control, uh, start uh, the task of altitude control instead of taking images and it should be on the fly. Uh, it should not happen that First, they have to complete, uh, they have to bring the complete system uh, on, on the space, spacecraft down, reboot it, and then start the new task uh, with uh, altitude control. Uh, it can be disastrous. So they want everything on the fly. Second thing, since the softwares uh, that are running on the spacecraft, uh, they need, they need to be maintained in a healthy state. And for that, uh, all the bug fixes, they need to be patched. Uh, all the bug fixes applied, new features added. Again, everything on the fly without the need of system reboot or the task reboot. Uh, because again, uh, system reboot, task reboot, all these are very expensive operations where you lose the context, bring the system again. Uh, all the other tasks are also uh, brought to shut down and brought up again. So we don't want that. We want software to be in healthy state, running state uh, all the time. All the patches, bug fixes should be applied on the fly. Uh, and so, so, so this bug fixing 
uh, on the fly, anything on the fly, and task replacements also on the fly and at runtime. This will ensure that our system is in a healthy state, uh, always in a healthy state, and our system on the spacecraft is doing the task, most important task that's required at that moment. And another main requirement uh, for going with a task replacement approach rather than full system image uh, upload was that uh, efficient utilization of bandwidth. Uh, the bandwidth between the Earth station and the uh, satellite or the spacecraft, it's quite expensive, it's limited, and we have to make sure that it's efficiently utilized. If, for, if we are sending the full image or the full module from the Earth station to the satellite, it's highly inefficient, it's going to be slow, and it's going to be expensive. We don't want that. We want only the part that's needed to be updated should be sent from the Earth station to the satellite, or only the new task, uh, or, or only the instructions uh, to switch to new task to be sent from Earth station to the ground station, from, from the Earth station to the satellite, and rest should be handled in the main system running on the spacecraft. So that, that will ensure that we are, we are utilizing the bandwidth in the most efficient manner. So yeah, these were all about the requirements. Uh, um, which led to this, uh, me developing this module called uh, Dynamic Scheduler. So what are the design considerations uh, while, uh, while I designed this uh, module or this system? Uh, first of all, uh, I designed it for uh, spacecraft industry. Uh, so it's, it's the, the, the requirements were a bit different and stringent in the sense. Uh, again, I will go into details of how they are more stringent and different in further slides. But coming first to the basic ones, uh, again, it's for embedded world. Uh, it will run uh, on a uh, embedded system or uh, on the spacecraft. So uh, it's, I have to ensure that its data and memory footprint is optimum. Second thing, um, I have to ensure that the main binary or you talk about the main OS binary is compiled and is independent from the application binary. This is important to understand uh, from design perspective. So what I have in my system is that the main binary system binary or the operating system binary here, it's a free RTOS binary uh, should be compiled and loaded independently from the application binary. Application binaries can be developed from many of the ground stations. So uh, we, have, we have the main platform system running on the spacecraft that has, uh, that has the free, that, that, that is running the free RTOS. And then uh, the application binary can be developed from any of the ground stations, application binary, or you can say the task, which different uh, companies, different organization or different clients want uh, to execute on that spacecraft. So they will be developing that independently. So once the task is developed, they should be able to compile it independently of the main system binary and send that task from ground station to the satellite. So that was the main approach. Uh, I have to use free RTOS, but I have to make sure that it's a standard free RTOS. There are no changes on it. So that, and so that uh, the application developers know which API, uh, where uh, to which API their applications have to link against and what they expect once they upload the application binaries to the uh, spacecraft that's running free RTOS. So it's a highly uh, plug pluggable component, plugin architecture uh, that I used or that I kept in mind uh, while, while designing the system. Again, yes, it has to have a minimum performance overhead and uh, uh, performance minimum performance overhead and it should have a minimal memory overhead. Uh, that's again the requirements for my design. Coming into the um, implementation stage, at, at simplistic level, I have a main system binary running on the uh, spacecraft on platform system. Application binaries compiled independently from different vendors, sent 
to the spacecraft. Um, at runtime, system binary, main binary detects that an application binary has come. Application binary can be a new task, or it can be a patch, or it can be a bug fix for the existing task. Uh, then the application binary is allocated, linked to the main system binary, and it starts its execution. So generally, uh, going further into details into the design. So a task uh, has two states. One is a user state. It consists of heap stack code. Um, allocated in a virtual address space directly accessible by the user. Then we have OS state, uh, which is allocated by the OS, not directly accessible by the US, uh, not directly accessible by the user, uh, accessible only via specific APIs or interrupts or whatever it is. And here, now I defined a new task state called checkpoint state. What is a checkpoint state? So apart from the user state and the OS state, Checkpoint state is a state where the task is in consistent state. So uh, while designing this application binaries, the developers have to make sure to define checkpoint states in their task. Because uh, the, the way I have designed the system is that a task can be updatable only if it's in checkpoint state. I'll give you an example. Uh, what is a checkpoint state? A checkpoint state, I define a checkpoint state as a state uh, where it's stack, where the task stack heap are in stable state and there are no transactions on the fly. Uh, for example, uh, suppose a program or a thread, a process um, uh, is running a for loop to read data from the memory. Now you can't define a checkpointable state in that for loop. So once, the, once that for loop is over and the memory is in consistent state, uh, it's stack heap are in consistent state. There are no transactions. There are no uh, uh, instructions, um, program instructions uh, currently in exec execution. At that point, user can define the checkpoint state. So, when, when, when a task starts, it goes into an inconsistent state. Uh, it does various operations. Then it goes into a checkpoint state, as I mentioned. Uh, so it's in a consistent state. So once, so bef when I have to do migration, I wait for the task to go into checkpoint state. Uh, once it's in checkpoint state, I freeze the state and call it checkpointable object. Then I decheck it. Um, so what does decheck means is that uh, if an update is received uh, from uh, the ground station or a patch uh, is received from the ground station. Uh, so I merge the old state of the task to the new state, merge those state and then uh, so I form a, a new task state and then the task starts to run again. So now the task that's running has a new code or, or the bug fixes or the new patch uh, that has been uploaded from the ground station to the space car. So going into detail, uh, migration, um, you, you, can, you can see from this, so we have a task code, let's call the code in V1 state. We have task data, let's call it task state V1. So we have code in V1 state, task state V.1. It's executing and uh, we create a checkpointable object. Uh, we create a checkpointable object. So it's at this state, um, we are ready to migrate to a new state. So we have this stage four, then transform the task state. Then we have code V2 and then task state V2. This is the merge state, or this is the task that has been uh, merged with the new task that has been uploaded from the ground station. And this is the new task state, and then the execution start of the 
new task state. Now, coming on to the uh, components. Uh, so what are the components in my design? Uh, first of all, free ATOS, that's the main system binary. Uh, that's one of the important component. Uh, then there is ELF binary. Now, this is important to, uh, again, uh, an important component that I have used in my system. Uh, I, I needed a way um, to completely control the application binary that has been loaded from the ground station. I needed to, under, the, the, the system has, the system needs to understand what are the requirements of the application binary. Uh, let, let me put it another way. So uh, earlier I mentioned uh, that the requirements for this project uh, being in space industry are a bit more stringent. So, and uh, so, and inherently, uh, if you are talking about uh, dynamic patching, uh, dynamic task replacement, it sounds a bit hacky. So, which will not be allowed if you talk about ESA or other regulatory uh, organization. They they won't allow this because, in a way, you are touching directly the process's memory, and uh, updating it, modifying it, which is not acceptable. So, I need to come up with a way. Uh, which can address their concerns. Now, when, when I was designing this system, um, one, of, one, of, one of the simplest way is uh, to use jump tables. So um, you have a task running, you have functions defined, you a new task come or an updated task comes, you identify the, suppose uh, you are executing um, a, a updated, if there is a function A and a, a new function A, comes, uh, you load the new function A, uh, finds its address, and whenever uh, in the old task, the control reaches to function A, you define a jump from this function A to this new function A. So jump table, but uh, that, 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 that happens. And, and this approach is used in uh, some of the server environment for live patching, uh, but this won't be acceptable. Uh, to the regulatory bodies dealing with space industries. So uh, I have to come up with a way uh, which can address their concerns. And here comes my approach of using ELF format uh, for application binaries. So uh, first of all, ELF is portable. So it's cross-platform. Um, it's a universal thing. It can run on any boards. Uh, any targets. And secondly, uh, it allows me or it it allows me to understand the need of the application binary. And that's the reason why I took ELF. Continuing my discussion with this, so what I did, uh, I I wrote a task manager layer that's integrated with free ATOS. So it's a part of main system binary, but sits on top of free ATOS. And what does it do? It has three main functions. It's memory allocator, it's registrar, and it's a linker. So this allows me, this task manager layer allows me to control, to completely control the requirement or the behavior of the application binary so as, uh, uh, so as to address uh, this, or this helps me to address the safety concerns surrounding this approach or surrounding this module. So by keeping the complete control, by, by keeping the con complete control on the behavior of the application binary, I can ensure that it's not doing anything wrong. So when an ELF, so this task manager layer, what it does is that when an ELF binary is loaded onto the system binary, or onto the uh, platform on the spacecraft, uh, it passes the ELF binary. Uh, it does all the allocation on behalf of the app 
or the ELF binary app, which is loaded in format, which is which is uh, loaded in format of ELF. So it does all the allocation for itself. It keep track. It keeps track of all the allocations, uh, all the memory freeze that happens, uh, all the stacks heap, everything. It keeps track of it. It registers it with uh, I reg uh, it registers it in a splay tree or uh, and a red black tree, and it links with the main binary. So, whatever the application binary is doing, whatever memory areas it, it it requires or whatever it has allocated, this task manager keeps track of it, and it's part of the main system binary or the uh, it's integrated with free RTOS. So, and then, uh, so, uh, and then once it has done all these things, it hands over the task to free RTOS. And now the task goes into free RTOS domain for its control. So here uh, I have, I got benefit of both the world. Uh, I don't have to write the complete operating system myself. Uh, I just I just wrote a layer on top of the operating system that gives me control of the uh, allocations and linking aspect of the application binary, and then I hand it over to the free RTOS layer so that now free RTOS can schedule it, uh, uh, can provide the kernel resources, whatever it need, whatever the application binary needs. Now free RTOS takes control of it. So here I got benefit of both the world, but by just writing a middle layer or a glue layer. So what's the state machine uh, for my system? So at boot time on the spacecraft, on the platform system, free RTOS along with task manager boots up. The application developer or from the ground station, an ELF binary is inserted into the memory of is, is sent from the ground station to the, uh, to the, to the spacecraft uh, platform system. Uh, it's inserted into the memory of the platform system. The system, the main binary or the free RTOS binary running uh, on top of uh, running in the spacecraft or on a platform system uh, detects uh, the new task. Uh, it detects, it finds out, it parses the ELF binary of the application, uh, allocates all the resources, links to the main system binary and do the migration, whatever is, um, do the migration of the old task to the new task, uh, and then starts the new task, hand it over to the free RTOS, and now free RTOS takes control of the task. So uh, boot time the system binary starts, an ELF binary is inserted into the memory of the system, uh, memory of the platform system. Uh, the system made the main system binary uh, registers all the tasks to the task manager. Uh, it's able to create new free RTOS tasks with standard free RTOS system calls. And then a newly, newly created task can be inserted into the free RTOS scheduling list. And the old task can be merged with a new task. And the new task uh, is now in an OS control state, free RTOS control state, and it starts its execution. Again, uh, diagrammatically explaining how, how things work. So we have create task. If it's unregistered onto the system, at first point when it's when it's transferred from, this, uh, from the ground station to the satellite, it's unregistered. So we need to register it. So the task manager has a function task registers. Then it registers the task. Then it passes the ELF binary, allocates the task. Now it's in allocation state. Task alloc is the function, the task manager, it's in allocated state. Then this task is linked and then it goes into OS control state. After that, it can be resumed, suspended or whatever it is needed. So uh, how, how the migration happened? Uh, as I explained in this uh, diagram, task start in consistent state, consistent check state, D check and the task start running again. So here it is, task is an inconsistent state. Wait till the task reaches the checkpointable state. Suspend the original task, uh, a newly, newly allocated task or the newly allocated uh, patch is uh, allocated, linked, 
uh, allocate and copy the memory section. So the task, uh, so the, so the, um, the stack and the heap of the old task is copied onto the stack and heap of the new task so that it gets the context of all the uh, con context of the old task. Uh, update all the non-atomic pointer variables to point to the correct memory addresses, start the task and put it into the OS control state and start the execution of the updated task. What are the risks and unknown? At present, I, uh, I, as I, uh, the, the, this project is still under de in development phase. Uh, I don't have the exact performance impact of the task management layer. Uh, this is something that I'll be working on. Uh, how much time it take? How much time it takes to uh, update the task? At present, I can I can upload. Uh, what, what is the present state of the uh, project? Uh, I have just uh, I have just completed where a stack uh, where a stack of an old task can be replaced by a stack of the uh, its patch uh, a task uh, t1 is executing with uh, with uh, with a stack s1 and if the updated task t2 comes with a stack s2 then uh, s1 and s2 are merged and um, uh, the updated task start uh, the next step will be to merge the heap to update the heap of the existing task with the new task. Uh, then the next step will be to completely switch from task T1 to a new task T2. Uh, for example, uh, as I mentioned, uh, if, the, uh, if the satellite is executing, um, uh, uh, is taking images at, at present moment, and if the uh, ground station realize that they need to do altitude control, then altitude control task or, an, or, 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 a, or a switch instruction will be sent from the ground station to the satellite and it should completely switch to the new task. So that's, that still needs to be done. And uh, then I need to uh, come up with uh, logarithmic com complexity and uh, memory footprint of uh, this approach. Now, uh, moving on to demo. So uh, it's a main, what I will show is that uh, main system binary is running on the target board. Uh, main system binary means free RTOS along with task manager layer. layer. It's running on uh, STM32. I will upload a new task from a UART uh, to the target board. And then you will see, so this, uh, so the, so the uh, and one more thing, um, the system binary, the main system binary has free RTOS, task manager layer, and a task, uh, a static task that will output as altitude control, altitude control, altitude control. Then I will upload a new task uh, from UART that will do AOCS. Uh, uh, so uh, I will upload this new task from UART to the target board. Uh, so you will see for, for some time, for 10 seconds, uh, for or for five, five seconds, you will see AOCS, altitude control, AOCS, altitude control executing simultaneously. And then uh, new task or the updated task, uh, AOCS uh, will migrate and altitude control task will stop and it's their stacks will be merged. And only you will see only AOCS, AOCS, AOCS going forward. That's the newly updated task. I, I, can't, I can't show exactly how the stacks have been updated behind the scene, but you will get a fair bit of idea uh, when, when you see the demo of how this thing is uh, working. So uh, this is STM cube 32. Uh, I will uh, upload a free R task and base task one to the board, uh, which, which I call as a system binary. Then I will upload a replacement task over UART, run newly uploaded task, and replace base task with a newly uploaded task. So this is my system. I will start it in a uh, debug mode. I have uh, breakpoints uh, set at some important location. So here it's main. Now here it it's waiting for the new task to be uploaded. I will uh, uh, so I will go here. I will get uh, the app binary, which is an ELF format, to the UART port. 
I will do that. And here uh, you will see the output. It's getting transferred through UART. Uh, here I click on this and altitude control task started successfully. Now I will do this and let's see. Altitude control, altitude control. No, it, the task has not uploaded. Let me do it again. So again, I will start. I will go to here. Start runtime update. Altitude control AOCS, altitude control AOCS. Both the tasks are executing simultaneously. And now the runtime process will start. Update migration will start. And now you will see only AOCS. So earlier for some time, uh, it was altitude control AOCS, altitude control AOCS, and now it's only AOCS. So the task, so the newly uploaded task has been updated uh, successfully and it's uh, it has started its execution going forward. Yeah. That's all from my side. Uh, thank you. Uh, and please feel free to ask any questions. Thank you.